everybody, Grandmaster Ben Feingold here, continuing our uh, opening uh, series. This series is on the Slav. And in earlier videos in this series, I always played knight f3 here, which is the most common move, in, even if you play knight f3 and knight c3. If you play knight c3, which has some advantages, it also has some disadvantages. And one of the disadvantages is d takes c4 is more interesting now. Um, and the reason is when white's trying to win his pawn back, it's slightly better for white not to have your knight here so that b4 doesn't gain a tempo. So if white's knight was on f3 and this knight was on b1, people would like white more. So dc4 is a serious move. And a more serious move is e5. And this is a very dangerous pawn sacrifice. If you have the white pieces and you like these positions and you like studying them, okay. But if you are like, man, I don't want to learn this. This is too complicated. Well, then you should probably stick to knight f3 on move three. And then, then you don't have to worry about it. Um, so this is the first video where this was a possibility. And... Now white has several ways to play. White can pretend it's a French defense in reverse and play this. And if black plays e4, which some people do, this is an advanced French defense with colors reversed and white has an extra tempo because you know, white's playing the French basically. White goes first. So normally the colors would be reversed and white would play there, but it's white's move. So that probably wouldn't be too scary if you were white but black is playing very aggressively. Um, also, black can take and try to get to some exchange French kind of position, which is relatively equal. Um, you could take up the gauntlet one of two ways. Uh, there's a famous game from an Olympiad, Kasparov Nikolic, from a long time ago. <laughs> uh, I think it was the 80s. And they played this famous uh variation check bishop d2 queen takes e5 and this has been played many times although not necessarily recently and i think kasparov played knight g3 and then later played knight f3 attacking the queen um if i remember correctly and i don't both sides castled queenside which is weird that's why i'm thinking i remembered it and kasparov won the brilliancy prize at the olympiad after explaining to the judges what a brilliancy was and why his his game should win. I don't think Anand was too pleased. He was one of the judges. Okay, so that's a really crazy line if you just take on e5 right away. Another way to play is to take on d5, take on d5, and you could, you could take on e5 now, which is similar to the last variation, or you could play knight f3, which... I think I played once, and after e4, you play knight e5. And this is super complicated. And if I remember correctly, I lost a game to Shabalov in this position. Let's see, how old am I? About 33 years ago. And <clears throat> very difficult to play with either side. And the idea for white is if black makes the move f6, which she should never do. It looks like it wins a piece. The knight has nowhere to go. We save ourselves with queen a4 check. And if <clears throat> anything blocks, the knight can safely take it, and the engine likes white. And if you really, really, really want to win a piece, okay, that doesn't work. The reason it doesn't work is black actually doesn't have a threat here. So if I play some random move like this, attacking your pawn, and you're like, yeah, I want a piece. Well, I skewer the king and queen, and then after knight f6, I take on e5, and, and white's winning. So f6 isn't a good move, and this position's very tricky. And my rec recollection is I, I played worse than him. <clears throat> so the truth hurts. So e5 is a very dangerous move, and... Um, if you're going to play knight c3 on move three, you have to know e5. And a lot of people, especially club players, 
They just make random developing moves that look good. And then if you know some sharp theory that they don't know, you could win some games quickly with black if you really study e5. It's not a move you can play against knight f3, but you can play it against knight c3. I'm not saying you have to, but if you're white and your opponent plays e5, you shouldn't sit there staring at it for five minutes. I mean, it's it's been played at the grandmaster level many times. And if you have black and you want to surprise your opponent, they think you're playing a boring Slav, play e5 and you spice it up. And very tricky variations. It's good to look at some lines, look at some grandmaster games and see if you like it for white or black. And I could have this position for either side. I've had it with white and slow chess. Um, with black, I've only played it in Blitz and Bullet because I'm too afraid to play in a real game. <clears throat> this is Grandmaster Ben Feingold with the Slav series. Please like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye, everybody.